hey, didn't see you there. Great timing. I was just thinking about doing something about this subtle aura of loneliness that always weighs down upon me, and now I can do something about it with a friend. I figured the best way for me to feel less lonely would be to meet new people. And where else to meet new people than an MMO? MMO standing for Massively Multiplayer Online Video Game. The video game is implied. MMOs are commonly filled with hundreds if not thousands of players, a ton of different mechanics, and a metric gallon of gameplay and quests. That mixture of content allows a player to spend more time playing an MMO than a person in the 12th century would spend being alive. Now I'm down for meeting new people, but MMOs just aren't gonna cut it for me. I've got something to do tomorrow. I can't spend all this time with a whole new game with mechanics and abilities that'll take me YEARS to understand! I'll instead turn my attention to a game with mechanics and abilities that I've already spent years to understand. Pokey MMO, or Pokamamo if you can't read, or po if you're blind. Pokey MMO is exactly what it sounds like, a Pokemon MMO. A way to play some previous Pokemon games with your friends online for PC. Yeah, that's right, Nintendo fans, the master platform is taking over. And mobile. In Pokey MMO, you adventure through slightly modified versions of the Pokemon games, Fire Red, Emerald, Platinum, and Black, all while in the company of other Pokemon addicts. You can actually walk through the routes with your friends. You can't help each other or anything, but look, I have a friend! Feels good. The multiplayer aspect of Pokey MMO gives you some other people to battle against, makes getting trade evolutions a lot easier, and... You know, I think my printer ran out of ink. Yeah, to be honest, the MMO aspect doesn't really go along with Pokemon very well. Don't get me wrong, it adds a sense of community and is a very appreciated feature. It's very cool that they brought back multiplayer for contests, and have some multiplayer battle modes in the post-game and during events. And the fact they made trade evolutions easier than ever can make Pokemon that weren't easily available in your physical cartridge super accessible. There are certain Pokemon that can only evolve when traded with another person, and through all of Pokemon it has always been the equivalent of pulling teeth. There were the games on the Game Boy, from Pokemon Red to Pokemon Emerald. To trade Pokemon in these games, not only did you require two copies of the game, but two entire systems and this tiny, barely functional doodad called a link cable. Or, for Fire Red, Leaf Green, or Emerald specifically, you could use the Game Boy Advance's wireless adapter. Which was better than the link cable, but that's not saying much, so are Nichols. Now it's clear Pokemon intended trading to be between two people who already had their own systems and games, and at least one of them wouldn't lose their link cable, probably. But these games are over 15 years old now. The chance of finding someone in person with a working Game Boy, a copy of the generation you're playing, and not going, you still play that? When you ask them if they can help you evolve your Haunter, is less than winning the lottery. I put this ad out in the paper three months ago and still haven't gotten a call back. Trading got a little bit easier with the release of Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, which made use of this growing fad called Wi-Fi. With Wi-Fi, you could trade Pokemon with anyone from all over the world. You could go and auction off your hard-earned Pokemon with random strangers using the Global Trade Station, or GTS for the acronym obsessed. Here you could put up one Pokemon at a time and specify what Pokemon you would like in return, and if someone had a Pokemon that fit your criteria, they could trade it for the one at auction. Now this was a handy feature that made getting harder Pokemon for the Pokedex easier, but it sure had its problems. 90% of the auctions on the GTS were people putting up rare shinies and legendaries and requesting level 1 legendaries or mythical Pokemon for them, which were either so rare that no sane person would trade them or didn't legally exist. So if you were looking for a slightly rare Pokemon, like say, Shieldon, you were lucky to find one that was even physically possible to get, nonetheless for a reasonable deal. And if you persevere through all the bullshit of the GTS to find a semi-reasonable offer, if you didn't have that Pokemon in your PC at that very second, it's most likely that someone equally as patient was gonna swipe it before you. But the biggest downfall to the GTS had to be that in terms of evolving your own Pokemon through trade and getting it back, you had higher chances of finding someone in person with the link cable, aka less than zero. But luckily they also added the ability to trade through the internet with your friends as well, so if you didn't get your Pokemon back, you could at least cyberbully the culprit. These modes have stayed with Pokemon up into the current generation of games. Albeit, they changed wildly through generations, with each generation usually having some part about it that made me want to vomit. But with Poke MMO, the trading process has never been simpler. 
Just go up to someone, right click on them, and request a trade. And you can trade Pokemon from your party, as well as in-game money. PokeMMO has their own in-game GTS called the GTL, where instead of trading Pokemon for another specific Pokemon, you can buy Pokemon or items with in-game money. Which is the exact reason we wanted to stop Team Rocket, so either in this world Team Rocket did nothing wrong, or all the players are criminals. I mean, most PokeMMO players are criminals, but that's besides the point. So PokeMMO made Pokemon's normal multiplayer features easier to access, but that begs the question, is there anything else that makes this better than just playing the games normally? And if we were living in 2012, I would give that a hearty... No. In 2012, PokeMMO is just a multiplayer version of Fire Red, with the option to add Pokemon Heart Gold sprites. But the game has definitely evolved since 2012. And perhaps, it's even become one of the best Pokemon games ever created. Now I know this statement has a lot in common with this text, it's a bold accusation, but there's a lot of reasons for this. But in short, PokeMMO takes these classic Pokemon games and improves upon them as a base. And there's also multiplayer. The first thing you probably noticed, besides the swarms of random protagonists roaming about, were the differences in graphics. There's really nothing wrong with the old graphics of Pokemon games, but personally, I don't vibe with any of them quite like the animated 2D sprites of Generation 5, and getting to see them through every region is so refreshing. Now the trainer battle sprites? Oh no. Yeah, any sprite that was even slightly animated is just frozen on the first frame. It looks like Eren has finally ascended. He has finally become Bug. Yeah, this game definitely has its visual moments. Like in Unova, the ferris wheel scene with N is all kinds of f***ed up. Normally in game, you ride on this ferris wheel with this character N, and N tells you he's basically the main antagonist of the story. And for people playing this for their first time, is a pretty crucial story point. In PokeMMO, you watch the ferris wheel move for the entire cutscene with nobody inside and no text is said at all. No N? Can't say that I do understand. Speaking of the overworld, some sprites were updated for Emerald's overworld, and my mom is a lot taller than I remember. You know, to be fair, my character's supposed to be 10, so it makes more sense that a 10-year-old would not be the size of their mom and athletic powerhouse Bruno, though he is canonically sitting. For Hoenn, they updated a lot of the overworld sprites to be the ones from Platinum, which was to seemingly make the NPCs blend in more with the player sprites, but in true anime fashion, it makes the main characters really stand out amongst the crowd. Speaking of standing out in the crowd, PokeMMO supports character customization in the black and white style of sprite. You can choose from many different colored shirts, bags, hats, costumes, hairstyles, and hair colors. I feel like an anime character already. I chose blue hair because I want to roleplay being Cress's nephew. Another graphical detail that is loved by many is Pokemon walking behind you again. You can do this in every region, and sure they don't do as much as in Heart Gold and Soul Silver, but it's still very cute aesthetically. Though only Generation 5 Pokemon with overworld sprites will walk with you, which is like 10 of them, and only one of them is Patrat. But luckily that can easily be fixed with the quick addition of a mod. There are plenty of mods out there to enhance anything graphical about PokeMMO, just in case the black and white style isn't really your thing, or if you want your magical monster companions to be magical female companions. Remember when I said PokeMMO players are criminals? Sure, the aesthetics are nice, it gives me a chance to use my eyes nowadays, but what does PokeMMO actually add to the experience? Besides multiplayer. Well, there's a lot of quality of life updates, like being able to change your Pokemon's nickname on the fly, and being able to check EVs and IVs directly from your party. Considering in older games, to find out your Pokemon's IVs, you needed to use an online calculator to figure it out, having it readily available is super convenient. Another thing that desperately needed a massive overhaul in the old games was the Pokedex. The Pokedex is supposed to be a Pokemon encyclopedia on everything you would need to know about your Pokemon, like its in-game location, and its cry, and its footprint. Everything you would ever need to know about Pokemon, except not even at all even. In PokeMMO though, the Pokedex is so much more useful. It tells you a Pokemon's evolution methods, their learn sets, their base stats, and their location in each region. Even if you're familiar with the Pokemon's normal locations, the Pokedex can still help you out due to certain Pokemon appearing in areas they didn't before. Some of which being from completely different regions, and even the starter Pokemon being able to be found in the wild. 
This can allow for a very different team than you'd see on a run of the base game, which for games you've played a lot, could be a breath of fresh air. It even tells you which routes in each specific region. Which, by the way, forgot to mention, you can travel between Pokemon regions, one of the things people have been asking for in official Pokemon games since Generation 3! You can start in any of the four available regions, and whenever you reach the Sailor with a Chatot, you can travel to any other region and start playing through that game. I think I'm all finished with Kanto for now, so I can't wait to set sail to the Hoenn region! Do not tell me I fell for a human trafficking scheme. AGAIN! But I already had a mom, and that one didn't ask me to set my CLOCK! Across all regions, I have four moms, one dad, thousands of siblings, and an uncanonical uncle. What is the dynamic here? Who gave BIRTH TO ME?! If you ever want to bail midway through a region due to an existential family crisis, then you can talk to your mom to send you back home. You can even take Pokémon you caught from other regions to your new one. Though if you don't have enough badges, they won't obey you, and if you send them out, they find anti-borning themselves a better alternative to whatever you just said. My Blastoise I raised from a Squirtle in Kanto that took on every gym leader and the champion is now pissed because I crossed the border. And you don't have to worry about your Pokémon getting too high leveled while on your adventure. Your Pokémon will stop leveling up until you get the badge required to raise the level cap. This change, among others, adds to my favorite aspect of PokéMMO. One of the most controversial aspects in all of Pokemon, but one I feel PokeMMO got just right. First, let's give a little bit of context to someone like me. From age 8 to 22, I consumed way too much Pokemon media to the point of addiction. My school warned me about the dangers of dank grass, but not leaf green. I played every main series game multiple times, know all the gym leaders' names and their Pokemon, the types of every Pokemon, and have a general idea of what stats are their best. This all goes to show that a significant portion of my memory is filled with absolutely useless trivia about Pokémon. Like knowing Wormadam Grass Cloak learns Leaf Storm at level 47 in Pokémon Diamond will literally NEVER have a use! The fact I know that Wormadam Grass Cloak even EXISTS is information that's just clogging up space in my brain and I CAN'T GET IT OUT! Based on what I've seen, I am FAR from alone in this boat. You know who you are. But the reason why I ended up learning all these things was that it made the game easier. Like most strategy games, Pokémon's difficulty completely depends on your knowledge of the game and its mechanics. For example, I see this Pokémon and know its name is Drapion, it's a dark and poison type, which means that it's weak to ground moves and immune to psychic. It's a Pokémon with high speed, attack, and defense, so attacking it with a special ground attack like Earth Power would be best. If I want to overpower it another way, I need to keep in mind it probably knows X Scissor, Night Slash, Earthquake, and Cross Poison or Poison Jab, which Night Slash and Cross Poison could be extra dangerous due to Drapion's sniper ability that increases critical hit damage. Now what would someone who's new to Pokémon see? Is that a f scorpion? Now, the difficulty of the main series Pokémon games have always been a talking point in the community, with most people saying the games got too easy past Generation 6, and some saying it's always been easy. Most people who know as much about the game as someone like me have a pretty easy time going through the main story, and we've found some alternatives to make Pokémon more challenging. Firstly, in a lot of games, there's an optional battling area in the post-game for more competitive battling and with different styles of battling. This is a great solution for those who enjoy the battles in the most competitive way, but highly competitive play is still beyond my personal ballpark. Listen, you guys have these long abandoned platforms, I want more difficulty in this giant world and characters they've crafted, not just the route with the daycare and the battle facility! Another solution to Pokémon difficulty can be challenge runs. Playing the game with extra sets of rules, like using only specific types of Pokémon, or adding permadeath. Permadeath runs of Pokémon are often called Nuzlocks, based on a webcomic called Ruby Hard Mode, where a guy plays through Pokémon Ruby and when his Pokémon faint, he releases them forever, and only allows himself to catch the first Pokémon he finds per route. Nuzlocks are a fantastic way to add some much-needed challenge to old Pokémon games, and some of my most favorite moments from all of Pokémon have to be for me doing Nuzlocke runs. Nuzlocke seemingly solved my problem. I get to use my knowledge of Pokémon in general, get to use my knowledge of weaker Pokémon, I get to enjoy the game in a much harder context. It seems like the perfect solution to my problem. At least it would be if I wasn't such a bitch. 
I wouldn't say Nuzlocks are too hard for me, I've won my fair share of them, but Nuzlocks come with a lot of low points. Whenever a Pokemon dies or you just want to add a new one, it's not unfamiliar to have to grind for hours just to lose it in the gym and do it all again with another Pokemon. And depending on the Pokemon you have, you may also have to be actively aware of what's going on while grinding, or else your Pokemon might just die while not paying attention. Like a goldfish! And the process starts all over again! So, to please a whiny, stupid Pokemon fanboy like myself, I would need a game that's already in the series with an increase in difficulty, but not that much of an increase in difficulty to where I'd have to grind a ton. Which brings me to the main course. PokeMMO took these games and kept them generally the same, but just ever so slightly more difficult. They tweaked the trainer's AI for the better, causing them to play a bit smarter with them being more likely to switch, giving their Pokemon coverage moves, and even having held items. It also gave the gym leaders and special trainers new Pokemon, and made it so the Pokemon a trainer would send out first would more or less be randomized. So sure, you can know that Crasher Wake starts with Gyarados, so having your electric type up front would be good, but uh oh, he accidentally started with Quagsire this time! Whoopsies! This in turn makes gym fights a lot harder, and may result in you having to level up faster to keep up, and normally a grind like this would be something akin to rigor mortis. But PokeMMO actually has remedies for this, with tools such as the EXP share, the lucky egg, which is now a consumable item, rare candies being able to just be bought over the counter, and most importantly, they brought in horde battles from X and Y. If you have a Pokemon with Sweet Scent, you can summon a horde of up to 5 Pokemon at a time, and having a Pokemon with a multi-hit move like Discharge, Earthquake, or Surf, you can get XP for the whole party fairly quickly. This could be a fast way of EV training, since all the Pokemon in a horde are usually the same, and Pokemon with the EXP share get EVs from these guys as well. Besides the new methods of obtaining Pokemon and items, hordes, and the NPC trainers not being completely brain dead, the last major difference to PokeMMO has to be that they made legendary Pokemon feel legendary again. Legendary and mythical Pokemon have sort of been watered down as the games have gone on. Not only in quantity, but also in optation method. In Generation 1, there were five legendary Pokemon, each found in their own out-of-the-way dungeon, really difficult to catch, and Mew not even being normally obtainable in the game. All these attributes cause these Pokemon to feel more powerful, and more sacred, and more of legend. Now compare that to Generation 5, that had 13 legendary Pokemon! Four of which were event exclusive, three of which were not obtainable without the opposite version of the game, and the other four, depending on which game you are playing, will literally rush to you wanting to be yours more than the quiet gamer nerd wanting to be the boyfriend of the girl with the Zelda backpack. PokeMMO makes all legendaries feel special, with some legendary fights like against Garatina being completely revamped. Instead of it being just a normal singles battle against the Pokemon Lord of the Underworld where you just chuck your Master Ball at it and head home for supper, it's a surprise triple battle where Garatina summons terrain from the Distortion World to fight you alongside it. New steps in a Pokemon game, haven't fought the ground before. They also make each legendary feel more special, being unable to catch most of them which I understand to some may be a huge letdown. Those are now Pokemon you can no longer use if you wanted, and that can really suck for some people. I personally enjoy it. I never really use the legendaries, and to me it would make these mythical and extremely rare and powerful Pokemon of legend feel less eventful if every player had them. You can still see them for your Pokedex by rematching the gym leaders after beating the Elite Four, but there are actually four specific obtainable legendaries per server channel. Those four are Mewtwo in Kanto, Rayquaza in Hoenn, Arceus in Sinnoh, and Keldeo in Unova. Not only is it a pain to catch these Pokemon, but it's even harder to keep them. Whenever you catch one of these legendaries, it automatically is sent into your party and the Pokemon is so powerful and prideful of its abilities, it will cause you to be unable to decline any duel requests by other players. If you lose a duel against another player, the Legendary is sent off to them, and if you log off or disconnect it, heads back home. All of this, mixed with the game always being on set mode, can lead to a much more challenging experience, while also allowing me to use my knowledge of obscure Pokemon trivia. Now as great as PokeMMO is mechanically, a lot of features from the games they came from haven't made it over yet, like Sinnoh's Underground, Hoenn's Battle Tent, or Unova's Sea Gear. 
but hey, at least they expanded on Duford Hall. This catchphrase is so trendy, it spread to all the other regions. What a neat little feature. Is PokeMMO a complete alternative to the original games? Depending on what you like about the original games, maybe. Is PokeMMO the best Pokemon MMO? Probably not, I've heard there's a bunch of better ones. Is PokeMMO a fun game that allows me to feel better about myself for wasting so much of my storage space in my brain on stats about fictional monsters? Did you watch the video? I said it like four times. Why did I set the alarm for-